Good afternoon. Well, I think I can work in this temperature. Little chilly this morning. Well, it's about, uh, well, I'd say about 42, 43 degrees this morning. And it's supposed to be uh, kind of cold tonight. Not real bad, but um, this is Halloween day. Normally I'd have Halloween specials and everything, but uh, you know, the way things are now, I've just been too, too very, not only too busy, but uh, my mind were on, was on other things. Um, what I did do though, is uh, things are drying up here. So I went and bought some uh, high temperature gasket material at my local hardware store, five bucks. And um, the guy at the hardware store says this should be okay to mount the carburetor or even the muffler right to the block with this. So um, that's exactly what I'm looking for and I can make my own uh, gaskets out of it. Okay, I also picked up a spark plug. All they have over my local hardware store is the Champion, but that's the equivalent of it. I don't know what the gap is, but uh, we usually set them at 30,000, so that should be okay. And I was going to get one of them little filters that go on the uh, end of the gas line, like in your uh, chainsaws and your weed whackers, and sit it on the end of this hose and just have it hanging in the bottom of the tank. Uh, the problem is there's so many different size hoses, so I'd have to bring this whole damn thing to get the right size hose to slip over this. The piece I cut off of here is, as I showed you, I still got it over here, uh, is about three quarters of an inch long, which is here. I, I have the Kodak ZE1, so I can't get you real close. So what I can do is take this into my hardware store and you can slip a hose over the end of this to get the idea of the diameter and then match a filter up on the end of that hose. Now this, as I said before, this has no screen in it. It might have had one, but it probably most likely did and it probably rotted out, rusted away. So um, all you need to do is to just have a little hose come down with the filter on the end and just have it hang down on the bottom of the tank. It don't have to go straight down. As long as it's laying on the bottom of the tank, it protects it. But anyways, what I'm going to try to do now, and I'm um, going to have to wait uh, next week. I, get, I still don't have any carburetor cleaner, so we're going to have to use the CRC cleaner because that's all I've got. So uh, that should work. I'm going to uh, shoot it up, to, up here, and um, Brendan says it should come out here. Um, he sent me an email the other day, and uh, he does watch my videos, and he says if you clean this here, uh, you know, you should get your spray coming out here. So that was, that's a good piece of information because I, I did not get that answer from anyone else. So if I shoot it up here and it comes out here, then I know I'm clear. Uh, I'll probably take a, a, maybe a guitar string. My son has enough of pieces laying around I can stick a piece of guitar string up in there and try to clean it um, Brandon says you got to make sure that you use the exact size screwdriver on this jet under here because once you break it off you'll never get it out well I'm not going to even attempt to take it out if I can't clean it with the guitar string then that's the end of it it's just not going to get done because uh, I'll, I'll definitely, most likely, break it off. It's not that I don't have the right size screwdriver. Uh, it's just the way my luck runs, you know. So, uh, anyways, this is clear, and it squirts out somewhere up under here, as I showed on my last videos. But I haven't tried this yet, and I'm going to lay this on the side. The old plug is still in here. Somebody had mentioned, while well, you lay this down, you're going to get hydro lock. Well, yes, but I'll take the plug out, and um, if I have to, I'll get the, uh, you know, I'll dump it and get the oil out or something, or run it, you know, pull the string and uh, without the plug and get any oil that's out of there. And uh, I've got a new, I put this new plug in after I do all that. So what I'm going to do now is to attempt to lay this down so I can get my um, 
guitar string in there, but before I do that, I want to spray up in there. And if it comes out here, I won't even have to ram anything in there. And naturally, I'm going to use the thinnest string I can find, the high E string on his guitar, uh, to put in here. So that, that sh should fit in there. I don't have anything else but guitar string to use. Uh, using a paper clip is way too big. It'll never go in there. And um, I also went to my local hardware store to see if they had, but I couldn't buy it this week, um, a, um, a metric wrench to fit on this. And uh, the sides on the box wrenches they have are no thinner than the box wrenches I have. So uh, I don't know how, what they use. They must use a special wrench on this top one here to get this carb off. So this carb is going to stay on the block. There's nothing I can do about this rubber gasket. This gasket material I showed you is okay to use there. But if I can't get the right wrench to fit this top nut here, there's no point in even trying to get it off. We'll just use the gasket material on the, for the tank. And uh, the tank, as I said, has a thin coating of oil all the way around inside. And um, I'll make up the gasket with the five hole, little holes that you see there. Three of those little holes are for the screws, and the other two are in there, and they obviously match something under here. The homemade cereal box gasket that was in here only had the three little holes and the big one in the middle, but it did not have the other two holes. They weren't there, so I'm going to make sure I copy this pattern from the tank here and use all the holes and try to cut them out as close as possible to the original. So I'll be doing that, but before I even do that, I'm going to try to clean this jet. So I think i got to stop talking. Now, might have to adjust the camera again. Yeah, the only way I'm going to get that top nut is with a thin-walled end wrench, which I don't think they make. So there must be a special wrench they use. I don't know what size. I didn't bother trying to measure the size, but I might do that. But let's do one thing at a time first. Let's um, turn this over. And like I say, if oil gets in there, uh, the plug is going to be changed anyway, so it don't matter. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do on this jet First, I'm going to try to spray in here. Look, so all I got is this. That's all I have. So now keep an eye up here because I'm concentrating on here. Nothing coming up except this potent world here. All right. Well, I tried very gently. I got two screwdrivers. I can't clean that. I can't find any guitar string. I must have thrown them out. Uh, I have this wire here. Stainless steel wire. I have no idea what the diameter is on that. Let's see. Oh, size 0 .032, 0 .032, so it's 32 thousandths, but it won't, uh, it won't go in there. Now maybe, from what I can see, I can't tell if there's a hole there or not. My eyes don't permit me to look that good. This is in the way. So, I really don't want to take that out, because if I give this a turn, see the screwdriver is 
Brendan says you got to get the exact screwdriver. You, otherwise, you mess it up, you'll never get it out. I'm not going to risk it. I'm putting pressure on it, but I'm not. I snapped that off, and it's goodbye. But no, I didn't see anything come up here, come out here. So that could be clogged, but I don't have anything, anything thinner. I mean, they make it look so easy. On, on these videos. Carol fixes all. I watch a lot of his videos, but you know, these guys, they make it look easy. They do it all the time. You know, and if they snap something off, they can always get parts and, you know what I mean, there's no problem. But me, a different story. And he also had this thing out, but this is in there tight. And if I snap it off in the carburetor, <laughs> you might as well throw this thing out. You know? So. And um, I guess it used a piece of brake line to replace this, but this is only missing about three quarters of an inch of the end that I cut off of this. So slipping a piece of tubing over it is not a problem. I can't... I don't want to take a chance on that. I'll come back in a minute. I'm going to look in the shed again and see if I can find something thinner to go in there. I don't want to put a drill bit in there, and I don't have any drill bit smaller. I don't even have a drill bit uh, this small, but it's like this wire here. All right, I went into my wife's uh, sewing box and she got one of these little tiny pins, needles. Now, if this don't do it, I don't know what you're supposed to use to put in here. Let's just see. If I can do it. I have no idea where, if I'm in the center or not. Yeah, I'm in the center. I'm in whatever hole that's there, but the needle is only going in just a tiny bit. It could be plugged, but I have no idea what gauge wire you're supposed to put in here. Nobody's ever told me that. Well, it don't look like I'm going to be able to succeed with this without risking taking this out and then I still don't have anything small enough to go in there. Now Brendan says he usually does not try to take these out but rather to clean them out. But what are you supposed to put in there? I mean this is a tiny tiny needle. This is the thinnest needle that I've seen in the, in the sewing kit. Well, it could be, maybe I can't get in because maybe it's all blocked up with rust, I don't know. I can feel it going into the hole, but only just a little bit, just the, just the point of this thing. So we're going to shoot some more of this cleaner in there. And uh, I don't get it into my glasses. See if it comes out the top. Well, I can't really tell. I don't see anything flying up out of here. But because I'm on an angle here, and there's no way I can put a hose on this because this is not a round uh, thing. If I squirt it, there's a hole here. Okay, when I squirt... Mm. 
when I screw it up here, it comes right out of here. Um, as I showed in the earlier video, this and this is two jets here. This is just an open hole. Whether it's supposed to be an open hole or not, I don't know. But if I, there's a hole up underneath the uh, carburetor. It's a clear shot. Watch. See? The spray comes right through that. But that's one of the five holes that was closed off in the homemade gasket underneath the... here. In other words, as you're looking at it, it would be... Oh. be this hole. This would be, this is the engine side of, uh, this is the engine side of the tank. It would be this hole here. Now that was closed off in the homemade gasket. This one was closed off, and this one was closed off on the homemade gasket. Uh, one, two, three. All right, it's actually... Yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. There's six holes. Six holes, not five. Six holes, three out of for the screws, the other three were blocked off. Or maybe that's supposed to be blocked off, I don't know. But spraying up here. Is my still in camera? I guess I am. Alright, I'm gonna try again in this thing here. All right. No, nope. it's coming out here, but it's not coming up out of here. So the only thing I can say is put the gas tank on and try it. I mean, there's no way I can run anything in that tubing, but it's it's still a little cold out here. Oh, it's not a it's not a it's only like 60 degrees out here. We're lucky if it's that warm, and I can't depend on that thermometer. It reads, I think, a little higher than it really is. We've well, been getting temperatures like in the low 40s, down to 40, and usually are uh, in around 60 or close to 60. Today, I think it's going to be, uh, it's not going to reach 60, so I can't go by the thermometer because it feels awful cold out here. All right, we're on digital zoom, but I think you can see it plain enough. Um, Okay, I'll get my ugly head out of the way here. Um, I showed you this one. I showed you this one. All right. But this is an open hole right here. And when I spray up underneath an open hole underneath the carburetor, it shoot, it's a direct shot right out here. Now, when I try to spray in the jet, nothing comes out of here, but... I'm going to try it again, but I got to bend this tubing. And I don't know if it'll work. Look, at, watch the butterfly. The butterfly's open. The choke butterfly's open. So let's see if anything comes out now that the generator's on the right side up. Alright, it comes out over here. Let's get you a shot over here. It did not come out the butterfly. Right there with my screwdriver. See that little tiny hole there? Well, when I shot it up this tube here, the jet here, it came out that little hole there. Alright, let's see if I can do it again here. Alright, watch that little hole. It did come out of there, made a liar out of me now. Let's see if I can get it into that hole. Well, I don't know, it's getting windy out here, it's getting very hard for me to see. 
it's very hard for me to work. But take my word for it, it came out this hole here, not out of the butterfly. So, now I hope there isn't a diaphragm in this because uh, you would never be able to get a diaphragm for it, no way. So, um, the only thing I can hope for, and I'm not gonna put it together today, because I would like to find out from somebody what kind of, what size wire would I go up in here? I mean, this needle here is real, real, real thin. I mean, it's, it's one of the smallest, thinnest needles that I've ever seen. And uh, it does, all right, it goes right in that little hole no problem, but it won't go up the tube, up the jet. And I'm not going to risk busting the jet off. Worst case scenario, we'll just let it run on half a three quarters choke, that's all. Because if I break it and break that jet off trying to get it out, Then I got something that don't run at all. At least if it runs on three-quarter choke, it's running. Not good, but it's running. All right, that's all I'm going to do today. It's it's still very windy. Um, you know, and we had that bad, we had a bad uh, windstorm here, and we didn't lose power, but uh, my brother's been out of power for over 24 hours, so all his frozen dinners are going to be thrown out, and they're going to have to buy them all again and he can't eat no microwave he's stubborn as a bull he wouldn't take any help I'm alright I'm alright no electricity no television no lights no refrigerator you know nothing he's got electric heat you know that's why I don't believe in electric heat I don't believe in electric stoves we have a propane stove if we lose power we can still cook So that's the way I look at it. And it has the igniters where it go click, 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 and the flame pops up. So you can light it with a, uh, a grill lighter, you know. You can keep your damn electric heat and electric stoves. At least uh, if we lose power, I can power the, uh, the furnace motor uh, and igniter with my generator. But if you've got electric heat, you're screwed, blued, and tattooed. All right, so this is all I'm going to do on this, and it's all enough talking. All right, so if anybody's got any ideas as to what size um, wire do I have to run up there, or uh, what size guitar string, I, don't, I can't find it. I had a couple of little short guitar strings, uh, cutoffs, that my son, when he done his guitar, but I can't find them. They must have dropped in the shed and you know the shed you'll never find it again if it goes on the floor and I gotta get some high temperature paint and paint this muffler too thanks for watching